Hi, I'm Zach with HKN, and today we are going to solve a problem involving a circuit that has an inductor in it. Now, an inductor's behavior is governed by this equation here, which states that the voltage across an inductor is equal to the inductance, L times the time derivative of the current through it. Now we can see that for a DC current, that corresponds to the derivative of current being zero. If it's constant, it's not changing, the derivative is zero, and that would make the voltage across it zero. So um, a inductor is like a short circuit to a DC current. Uh, if the current changes, then a voltage has to appear across the inductor. So we will solve this circuit for the value across the voltage across this resistor as a function of time. We can see there's a switch up here that closes at time equals zero, and we can assume that it's it's always been open up until time equals zero. So we're going to end up with a differential equation, and so we're probably going to want some initial conditions. Um, so since we know that a inductor acts as a short circuit to DC current, we'll solve for the initial value of the current through the inductor through this branch, and we can also get an initial value for this voltage. So the initial value of the current through this branch is going to be equal to the current divider rule with six amps as your source. So the current through this branch right here is equal to six amps times the resistance of this branch over the resistance of both of these branches. So that's going to give us, we'll call this IL at zero minus. It's going to equal six amps times 12 ohms over 12 ohms plus four ohms. And that is going to equal 4.5 amp so that's our initial value of the current through through the inductor right so and we also know since the current through here and the current through here have to add up to six amps we can find an initial value for this voltage so the initial value for this voltage is the current through this branch times the resistance. And the current through the branch is equal to 6 minus the current through this branch. So that's 1.5. So so the voltage that we're looking for, we'll find that it's called V0. The voltage we're looking for right before time equals 0 is equal to 1.5 amps flowing in there times 6 ohms and that's equal to 9 volts okay so now we have a couple initial values and we will now set up a, a general form of our differential equation that results from this so, we can see that when time equals zero, this switch closes, and then this entire top here is a short circuit. So essentially what that does is puts these two resistors in parallel with each other. So, once this switch is closed, we can redraw the circuit, and it'll be a little bit simpler to see. So at time equals zero, This circuit becomes a circuit with
Now this resistor is going to be these two resistors in parallel. Uh, 3 ohms in parallel with 6 ohms is 2 ohms. And then we have our 4 ohm resistor there still. And we have this 6 ohm resistor. And we have our inductor. Now this is this is an equivalent circuit once that switch is closed. So now we're going to do KCL and KBL to get a couple equations that we can use to set up our differential equation. Now, first we will use uh, let's see here. First, we're going to use KCL, and we're going to see that the current through the inductor is equal to six minus the current through this. Through this And the current through this is equal to our voltage that we're looking for divided by this. So we're going to say IL is equal to 6 amps minus this current, which is equal to V naught over 6. Now that equation is always true. So that gives us one thing to work with to set up our differential equation. Now we're going to want a second equation and we can get that using KBL around this loop. So with for that we're going to see that our V naught not minus the voltage across our inductor, which is equal to the inductance times the time derivative of the current through it. Minus the voltage drop across these resistors, which is equal to IL times 6 ohms. Now according to KBL, that all equals zero. So we're going to use these two equations to set up a differential equation. So we're going to do a little bit of rearranging here. This equation is going to rearrange to So now we have this and we see that the value of IL is equal to 6 minus V naught over 6. So we can substitute this anywhere we see IL in this equation. So we're going to get 2 times the time derivative of IL, which is the time derivative of this expression. negative 6 times IL, which is negative 6 times this expression, all of that plus V naught. Okay, so that is a differential equation in V naught. The only unknown here is V naught and its derivatives. So so we're gonna we're gonna simplify this. This can be rearranged somewhat here. We're gonna have
Now, um, I got this just from algebra. Uh, you might want to you might want to take some time and do it yourself. Try to get this. This is what this reduces down to. So now this equation is separable. So we're going to take this and I'm going to work on it up here. I'm going to erase a little bit of stuff. All right. Okay, so we can separate this so that we have only time expressions on one side and expression in uh, v naught on the other side. We're going to get 1 over v naught minus 18. equal to negative 6 times time differential. Okay, so we can integrate both sides of this to clear our differentials here. So we're going to integrate this side is the side that has v naught in it. So we're going to integrate from the initial value of v naught to the value of v naught at time t, which is what we're looking for. So we know the initial value of v naught is 9 volts. So we're, in, we're going to we're gonna integrate from 9 to v naught at time t of this expression. All that is going to equal the integral of negative 6. from 0 times t. Okay, so this integration is relatively straightforward and it results in hard to visualize sometimes. So a good thing to do is to step back and look at your answer and see if it makes qualitative sense. Now, since we know that an inductor is eventually going to act like a short circuit to whatever happens here, we know that this voltage as a function of time will eventually settle down to a constant voltage, right? So if we see our equation here, as time goes on, as time goes to infinity, this term is going to equal zero. Initially it equals nine, eventually it's going to equal zero. So our, our voltage will go from a value of 18 minus nine, which is nine, and it's going to gradually go up and settle at a value of 18, and that makes, that makes sense. So that's, you know, that's, a, that's a good way to tell if your answer is probably right. Good.